Hey everyone. I wanted to come and talk to you a little bit today about coping emotionally. We all have so many things, especially right now with all the virus situation. But aside from that, I want to address this on illness, coping with illnesses, chronic illnesses, but more importantly for me and for people that I hope listen to my channel, I wanna address people that live with spinal cord injuries and multiple sclerosis. What is coping emotionally? We will address that. However, today's video is going to be on dealing with the loss. And I'll explain in just a moment a little more about that. But I'll also have a whole series planned. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more about that. See you in a minute. Okay, so here we are again. I want to begin a series on emotional coping and that will address several layers and several topics because there's just too much for us to talk about and discuss on one video. Our emotional coping series videos throughout until I'm done with that series will be posted each Wednesday. I plan to upload videos on Wednesday and Friday and occasionally a bonus video on other days. But every Wednesday and every Friday you will get a video unless something were to happen tragically to me. On Wednesdays, through this emotional coping series, that's when these will be posted. Today, like I said, is on experiencing loss. But I want to address, I can't talk today. I want to address many topics, such as adaptation, how, how you adapt to your new life, because that affects us emotionally as well. I also want to talk about how to uh, seek out resources that are available to us um, to help us because that relieves a lot of stress, which again, affects us emotionally. I also want to address people how to seek out resources for those that suffer with the more serious effects such as clinical depression and things of that magnitude because those are important. I want to help everyone face reality also. You know, we can't live in a world where we pretend everything is okay, because it's not. There's no way that our life, dealing with the spinal cord injury, can always be happy, wappy, cheerful, and okay. We all have days where we are fed up and want to just everything to go away, even the world to go away. Sometimes we blame ourselves, we blame whoever, but we all have bad days and pretending we don't helps no one, not ourselves and not others who look at us and think, well, how come I can't feel like that all the time like she does? I have my bad days. I am able to push past those a lot, but I have my bad days. Everyone does. So I'm human too. I want to educate people on some of the issues. We all need to educate ourselves on the facts of having a spinal cord injury and the facts of having MS. It's very important that we deal with facts because each person is affected differently and what happens to one person may not happen to us and vice versa. So it's very important that we educate ourselves so we can go to our physicians with informed questions and ask for educated and informed responses from them and be able to understand what we are being told and what we read. So it's very important that we educate ourselves. I also want to address stress. It's hard to avoid stress, 
but it's important to find ways to minimize it. And they do exist. So that's another topic. And who knows, as we go along this, there may be more. But those are just a little example of what I will be talking about in this series. So let's get to our topic for today, which is experiencing loss and how we cope with that. How do we talk about experiencing loss? What have we lost? Well, for some of us, we've lost the ability to walk, the ability to even feed ourselves, and to do so many things for ourselves. We've lost a lot of independence, and that's a very hard thing to come to terms with and to live day to day and understand and experience on so many levels and be able to cope with that. It's gut-wrenching. I'm not going to lie. It's one of the hardest things I have had to deal with during all of this. In order to process the facts of my illness and my injury, I have to grieve it in many ways. A lot like grieving the loss of a loved one. You have to go through the process. There's no way to jump over it or go under it or sidestep it. You have to go through it. I have a bad habit of allowing negative thoughts to go into my head. And I have to find a way to get rid of those or to cope with those or to allow myself to understand. For me, I'm a Christian. And so for me, religion and my faith play a huge role in how I do that. I know that a lot of the lies that I am telling myself are just that, lies. They're not truth. I was not punished, and I'm not ugly, and I'm not worthless. And sometimes those thoughts do enter our heads. I have divided them up into categories. First category is what I call the I can't. I can't be happy. I can't do this. I can't go here. I can't, I can't, I can't. I always look more at the I can't than the I can. I need to focus on what I can do more than what I can't do, and I'll find that there is more to this life, even in my condition, than I realized. The I am. I am ugly. I am unwanted. I am unloved. I could go on and on. We put those thoughts in our heads because of the loss. Because of the loss we have experienced, we now think that we don't fit the norm and suddenly I am this, I am that. Because what I used to be, I can't be anymore. Because my life has changed, my abilities have changed, my future has changed. So I focus on what I am now physically. When I need to start focusing on who I am inside, what I am, and what I am capable of. First and foremost, again, my spiritual faith does play a role in this. Because first and foremost, I am a child of my God, my Lord, and my Savior. And that is the most important person I can be. So I try to remember that at all times, even in my darkest moments. The next category is I will. I will never be able to do this again. I will never be able to go here again. I will never walk again. I will never ski again. I will never ride a bike again. I am faced with that every day. And that has been extremely difficult. But just because I can't do certain things doesn't mean I can't do anything. 
It doesn't mean I should not exist. It doesn't mean that I can't be happy and have a life. I can be all those things and more. Yes, I may never walk again. In all likelihood, short of a miracle from God, I won't. But that's okay. Because, again, my spiritual faith, I know one day, whether it's here on earth or in heaven with my Lord, I will walk again. So I focus on that. Find something that you can focus on to put these negative questions and answers that you create away. I know it's not going to be successful to do this every day, but every day put an effort forth and you'll be surprised how little by little you carve away at some of these negative thoughts and you get rid of them and you throw them aside and less and less of them exist. And it's not as hard on you as it was in the beginning. I also want to speak for a moment Things such as this, experiencing loss, does affect our behavior. For me, I'm very grouchy on the days that I'm really struggling emotionally. I'm grouchy. My husband bends over backwards, goes above and beyond and way out of his way to do everything he can to make sure I'm comfortable and that I have everything I need and if at all possible and as much as he can afford to do so, anything I want. But, I can be so grouchy. I can be snippy. And it has nothing to do with him. It's because I'm focusing on my loss. All I want that day is to have a little bit of my mobility back. A little bit of my independence back. And I can't do nothing to make that happen. So, I feel helpless. And I'm frustrated. And I'm just grouchy. And sadly, as wrong as it is to do that, I take it out on the one person that loves me the most. For one example, my husband tries to help me. Sometimes a little too much. Sometimes he um, steps in because he feels he can do it much easier. Even though it may take me... 10 times as long to go get something or to do something for myself. He wants to help me so much and it hurts him so much to watch me struggle to do something that he wants to just step in and do it. And I understand that and I love him for that. But he's taking away my ability and sometimes I want that because I'm in a different mindset on that particular day. But on some days, I want to do it myself. And when he steps in and does it, it reminds me of what I've lost. And it frustrates me. And then I start the downward spiral emotionally. So, today, we've touched upon very briefly, but we've touched upon that we do experience a loss when we have a spinal cord injury, and when we have MS, and I'm sure so many people can relate to this that suffer with chronic illnesses and other health-related things. So I'm sure, like I said, many people can relate and understand where I'm coming from. And we need to learn and recognize that we have experienced a great loss and feeling how we feel is okay. And we have to give ourselves permission to feel that way. The secret is to find ways to cope with it and to get those negative feelings and negative thoughts out of our mind as much as possible and move forward to adapting. And that will be the topic for our next week, next Wednesday, that will be our topic. So, God bless. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video is uploaded. And be happy.